Hey, Jay Clark here, Dirt Bike TV. Today we've got a real treat. Two 23 KTMs. We've got the 350 XCF right here and 350 SXF. These are the Goldilocks of bikes. We think these are the perfect size bikes for a lot of guys. Whether you're trail riding or full motocross, a lot of guys want to know which bike is best for them. We're going to ride both these bikes on the track and the trail today and give you our opinions. The XCF is really very close to the motocross bike. Same ECU, those types of things. Uh, got the same engine mods and upgrades for 23. It's a whole new engine, whole new chassis, frame, everything. Suspension updates on both bikes. All right, I've pulled Tyler in here with KTM Media, and he's going to give us some little info on some of these updates on these bikes. We're going to talk first about the 350 SXF. Tell us about these improvements and what you think. Uh, so the 350, all brand new engine, all brand new frame. Got a cool quick shifter option, all new map buttons. The bike's brand new from the ground up. Um, the biggest part of this 350, man, it's got a lot of power these days. Past that, everything's brand new and everything's really rad. Yeah, so I, I was at the intro for the 450 Factory Edition last uh, winter, and a lot of the updates are subtle. You know, foot pegs are moved in, mm -hmm. uh, different size rear axle, uh, just lots of things. You know, the shrouds come in here to, you know, get less uh, roost coming in there, right? And, yep. and uh, just lots of little things that they addressed. Now, this one has the quick shifter. This one does not, the XCF does not, because they figure if you're riding XCF, you probably don't need the quick shifting. Uh, so for right now, the XCF doesn't have quick shift. It will be coming in the future. Okay, I noticed in the XCF, they have an updated uh, kickstand, looks looks updated. Yep. And of course, got the 18 inch rear wheel, the big tank. Uh, anything else you can think of? Uh, the bike is coming with that sweet skid plate now. Skid plate's pretty rad. Um, past that, it gets the same exact updates that the track model does. So. Uh, not much more past that. Perfect. And we've liked those skid plates from the power parts. We've run those style before and they, 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 they bolt up really quick and easy so you can pull them off for washing and yeah. changing oil real easy. Uh, we like those. Comes with some hand shields. Uh, so we're looking forward to trying these things out. Appreciate you coming out and helping us out. Here we go. Okay, it doesn't get much better than riding brand new bikes. I mean, I, I can't complain. Uh, that's pretty fun. Right here, we're on the vet track at Quia on the 350 XCF. You can always just tell by those the hand shields that come stock, which is nice that it comes with hand shields. It should, and it is great that it actually comes with a nice skid plate. Those skid plates are nice. They bolt off and on easy, as we said, and um, hold up really well. So that's a nice feature to actually get on an off-road bike. Um, this is Ratto following me on the track. One thing to not forget is that these XCF bike is very close to the motocross bike. When you're hopping off and on these bikes, as you can see Rado and I here, it's hard to tell and remember which one you're actually on. Um, the XCF, we feel like the suspension's a little plusher. And here on the trail, guys will get on me and they think that an XCF isn't, they, they, they get upset that it's not a real trail bike. And I totally understand, it is what it is. But this is the way KTM has come about it. That bike is basically a motocross bike with these few mods with all the mods that we mentioned it has the same mapping same engine and it feels really good on the trail it works different gearing in, in the transmission which we really like that six speed transmission the wider ratio with the different they run a 47 tooth rear sprocket on the xcf and a 52 on the motocross version so it's a drastic difference so it, for whatever reasons, that difference makes up well on the track and trail, so it works really well. The, this XCF bike, you cannot easily convert this into a dual sport or put a headlight on it. It is, does not have the power to do so. Um, so don't be buying an XCF thinking you're going to make it into a dual sport really easily. Um, one of the cool uh, things that's updated is the actual seat mounts difference backwards. It goes forward. So it, that's a total opposite deal on these bikes. So a little bit different thing we thought we'd throw in. Back on the track on the SXF, uh, I think this was like my first lap here on the track maybe. And, or is, I don't know really sure if this is Rado or me, but uh, it's, uh, the, XC, the XCF has a little bit softer suspension than the SXF. I, I don't know that it's a huge difference, uh, but I think it's a good difference. Uh, and it's me because I'm actually doubling that. So that's why you can tell it's me and not Ratto and that one right there. So no offense, Ratto, but uh, that, that was me. With the XCF model, one of the things I will say is it, it is more expensive to buy out of the box and it's also harder to find. There's not as many of them for sale. But the resale a year or two or three down the road is typically a lot better 
than uh, the SXF models. So that's one thing to consider as well uh, when you're thinking of that. So the quick shifting feature, we barely got to mess with here. I have messed with it at Glen Helen real quick, and I think it's going to be a really good feature on the SXF bikes. That quick shift is a cool feeling. It's going to have to be in a long, certain type of track to where that's really going to be effective with the quick shifting. Um, but as far as the, the new starter off on button, really cool feature having them both on the right side. And then this, the map selector switches are really easy with the green and white. We typically ran the white one on most everything and then for sure on the trail we ran the white which was the little bit tamer one it's a very small difference in being able to tell the difference between the two thanks for watching the video so far don't forget if you're going to shop for new parts for your dirt bike at rockymountainatvmc.com to click on the link in our description below okay so that's a blast there's not much better than riding two brand new bikes the same day we also had my 21 350 xcf that we kind of compared to so we we rode three different bikes and had a lot of fun uh, on the track and trail, not ideal trail conditions with how hot and dry it's been out here in Southern California, of course. So, but at least we got a rough idea on the trails and our findings are kind of along the lines of what we thought, but we had an amazing time doing so. So first of all, we had Rado, myself, David, and Donnie Bells, all riding all the bikes. And so that was really cool to get a bunch of different opinions. And we kind of came up with even I think maybe even more so of what I thought with the older generation bike, that the XCF is a really good bike for most guys overall. If you can only buy one bike, which most people do, I think it's probably the best bike to go with because you can use it in such a variety of different uh, places. You know, it works great on the trail. And on the trail, I think the gearing is a lot better than this bike. And with that extra six gear, you can use it to connect those trails. So I think that's really helpful. Uh, as far as on the track, you don't notice much of a difference between the two bikes. Uh, this bike, the XCF, in some ways with that gearing, we would probably try a 48 rear sprocket, get a one bigger. Um, and we'll put those ratios up here on the screen. Let's put those up and you can see those ratios. That, that difference is with the 350 XCF, you can kind of even leave it in a gear longer. You can leave it in second and third longer. And those are probably the only two gears most people would use on most regular outdoor type tracks is second and third gear. It's all you would ever use uh, on the track second and third gear and, and that's why I might try test a 48 or a 49 to see if I, that would help me carry second and third only and I think that would be really good and and a good fit so overall the bikes both feel amazing now the what I didn't like I guess is still I, overall I've been riding spring forks 95 percent of the time and I'm still a spring fork guy overall so it is I think for me a bit disappointing with the, the expense of these bikes and that they have WP at their disposal and they could have spring forks on these bikes like that. Um, so for me, I'd prefer to see spring forks on these bikes. I think it's easier for most guys to work with. I think overall, most guys are gonna be happier. Um, it gains a little bit of weight, but so do me and Donnie, right? So not a big deal. Um, I think it'd be better to have spring forks on these bikes and would it stop me from buying one? No, because I think if you get your suspension done like most people do, um, you can do a pretty good job with it. Uh, we've had Factory Connection and Race Tech both do a good job with the air fork and setting it up. So I wouldn't let the air fork shy me away from buying one of these bikes. I think you could work with it, and especially with the XCF is a bit softer than the SXF, and I think we like that. Um, it was pretty pretty good. I'd, I don't think it would, it would make me scared of buying one at all. Um, it is a shame that for a lot of guys, you know, a thousand or fifteen hundred or two grand to do a conversion depending upon what level you go is kind of a shame on a brand new bike but what other 350 are you going to go buy uh there is none so this is what we're left with right now as a good choice if the other brands had a 350 xcf type bike there'd be a lot more competition and some of those spring forks on those bikes uh, i think i would probably like better so overall this 350 xcf to me is just a real winner uh it's it does everything um it's, it's more than fast enough and our, it's, it's definitely as fast as our 21 modified with porting and vortex and all that. It's definitely as fast and our 21 has a, uh, a FMF slip on uh, muffler with a Sparky in it. So it's really quiet. 
that's one thing these bikes are not is quiet. So the muffler, stock muffler is loud. I think I think a slip-on on these bikes with a with an insert might actually help them give a little bit smoother power, be less likely to stall in those tight situations. So that's something we'd probably look at in the future is testing a slip-on with an insert in them. Uh, that, so that's something I would look at. Uh, so the ratios, I, I think the transmission is better overall for most guys. If you're just a moto guy who's doing 80, 90% track, this bike, when I'm trail riding this bike, we got some footage of me trail riding this thing. It's not like you're going to be suffering on the trail. The only place I think you're really going to have a tough time is maybe that gearing where you could want to stall down in the bottom and the slow, slow stuff, or those connector trails where you wish you had six gear. So uh, I would, if, if you're an 80, 90% track guy, then obviously this is the bike. It is a little cheaper, going to be a little easier to find than the XCFs typically. So that's something to consider there. Um, all the improvements just feel, I feel right at home on these bikes uh, overall. And I think uh, Donnie, David, Rado all kind of felt the same way. For some guys, if you're on the fence about um, a 350 being too fast, you might want to just get the gas gas, which is going to be way cheaper for 22, 23. You could get one of those and be a lot, a little slower, you know, and smoother. And uh, so that's an option for you as well. So on the track and trail, these things were a blast. Uh, had fun riding with, uh, uh, with Rados, you know, a little battling out there on the vet track and on the trails. And appreciate Donnie helping out with video, David helping out riding, and KTM with Tyler out here helping us out. That's been a great time. So hopefully you enjoyed and hopefully this helps you out. But overall, if it was me, 350 XCF all the way. We'll see you. On X Off-Road, nowhere to go with the number one GPS app. Access 500,000 miles of trails and roads, open dates and public lands. The Elite version even shows landowners and property boundaries. Download the Onyx Off-Road app. To save 20%, use the discount code DBTV1.